Who's the shooter? What information do we have? As I mentioned on the show yesterday, we don't know very much about him. We know that he's 20. He, he is. He, he was 20 years old. We, it, it would appear that he was a registered Republican. That's what all the left-wing news networks are trying to point out. The thing that they don't want to say is that it, the only political donation he ever made, the only political activism he seems to have taken part in, is donating to Democrats, a progressive Democrat group. So that's kind of weird. Uh, why, why was he a registered Republican? And why did he donate exclusively to Democrats and progressives? I don't know. His dad apparently was a uh, registered, is a registered libertarian. The mother is a registered Democrat. Uh, who knows? Who knows? We, we now know that he had explosives in his home and in his car. And this doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. If he's crawling up on the roof and shooting at the president, he had to know that he, he was going to have his head blown off as soon as secret. You would think he would, he would have understood that he would have his head blown off the minute he started to get those rounds off. Some people are wondering why he didn't have his head blown off sooner, why it took so long for the Secret Service or local police to respond. But then why would he have explosives in his car if he, if he knew that he was going on a suicide mission? Very strange. Something even stranger has just turned up. The shooter... The would-be assassin, two years ago, appeared in a TV commercial for BlackRock, possibly the most powerful financial institution in the world. My name is Brian DeLalo. I teach AP and Honors Economics in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Financial well-being to me is knowing that I can be free to do the things that I love to do. I hope when I retire someday, they say, you know, that guy made this place a special place to come There's to school a kid. and gave as there much he as he could to help the community. There was him. This isn't some conspiracy theory. BlackRock acknowledges this. They've pulled the commercial down. BlackRock has $9.1 trillion in assets under management. When you take actual nation states out of the equation, when you take, I don't know, the Federal Reserve out of the equation, you're talking about basically the largest finance, financial institution in the world. What? So this is setting people, you know, the, everyone's pulling out the tinfoil hat now. What does it mean? How on, what? How is the would-be assassin who apparently doesn't have any social media, it's kind of hard to believe that in 2024, people don't have a, a trail on, on the internet. They don't know social media we can find. And then he's registered Republican, but he donates to Democrats. That's really weird. That doesn't really satisfy. It doesn't answer any political narrative. We don't have no manifesto, no, no nothing. What? And then he pops up in a glossy TV commercial two years ago for one of the most powerful and, you know, kind of has a reputation as a really swampy, politically involved financial institution with $9 trillion under me. What? Now, I, I don't know. I don't know. No one really knows. A any would assassination, successful or unsuccessful of a president, I think legitimately should raise lots of questions about a conspiracy. It's not saying there was some conspiracy. Could have been acting alone, but you got you got to investigate that, obviously. But I'm not convinced it had to be a conspiracy. I'm not convinced that this BlackRock commercial has to have some particular meaning. And, and here's why. Here's why. It gets to exactly what I was talking about on my show yesterday. The entire introduction of my show yesterday. A 15 to 20 degree turn of Donald Trump's head was the difference between him losing the top of his ear and him losing the back of his head. A, a 15 to 20 degree turn of Donald Trump's head at the precise moment that it occurred just before the, the round went off from the assassin's bullet or from the assassin's gun is the reason that Donald Trump is alive today. There's so much more to say. First, though, go to puretalk.com slash Knowles. You've heard me say for a long time that cell phone service with Pure Talk is half the cost of Verizon, ATT, or T-Mobile. You might be thinking, what's the catch? There's no way Pure Talk can offer unlimited talk, text, and plenty of data for just $20 a month. I say, just ask the thousands of other listeners who have already switched. They are loving America's most dependable 5G network. They love Pure Talk's U.S. customer service. They love their selection of premium phones, and they love the money that they're saving month to month. So what are you waiting for? It is time to start supporting companies that share your beliefs, like beliefs in creating American jobs, the belief that it's important to support our veterans. It is time to switch your cell phone service to Pure Talk. Plus, 
With no contract and a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com slash Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, to upgrade your cell phone service to America's most dependable 5G network and save an extra 50% off your first month. 50, 50% off your first month. That is puretalk.com slash Knowles today. So improbable that, the, that his head would have turned that way is to seem impossible to people. Unless you recognize that the cosmos, this is what Christians would recognize, what religious people would recognize, the cosmos is so finely tuned to God's providence that when coincidences happen, a Christian would say, yes, of course. You know, it's, as, as a priest friend of mine points out, it's a wicked generation that, ignore, that, that, that seeks for signs and wonders, but it's a stupid generation that ignores signs and wonders. The, the Christian vision of the world is a semiotic vision of the world rich in symbols. Things mean something. And when coincidences pop up, you don't, you don't, you don't always need to find out their particular meaning. It's, it's a sign, as far as I'm concerned, that just, yeah, God, God exists. The universe is intelligible. There is a creator, and creation implies a creator. It just from reason, just from nature, you can come to that conclusion. And it, that might just be what's happening here. If you, if you can chalk up Trump's turn of his head to the playing, uh, the, the playing out of God's providence. You could attribute this coincidence to that as well. I don't know. I just don't know. We don't really know very much. We don't know how this guy was allowed to get his rounds off, get up on that roof. Right now, local police are blaming the Secret Service. Secret Service are blaming the local police. Uh, there was an interview with a former Secret Service agent who, who made the obvious point. Even if local police had been tasked with securing the area outside of the security perimeter of the rally, even if local law enforcement did drop the ball, it is the responsibility of Secret Service to ensure that everything is going according to plan. Even if the Secret Service says, hey, local police, I want you to secure those buildings over there. It nevertheless is the responsibility of Secret Service to make sure that happens. The job of U.S. Secret Service is to protect the president. You show up to a small town of 12,000 people that has a handful of buildings of any size in it, and, and you're not going to go check those buildings when, according to reports, Secret Service knew these were security threats. You're just going to trust that to some almost certainly underfunded and understaffed local police department? Out of your mind, if you think that's acceptable. So ultimately, the buck stops with Secret Service. When are we going to hear from the Secret Service director? When are we going to see any accountability? As one source uh, for, for these reports added, just because it's outside the perimeter doesn't take it out of play for vulnerability. You've got to mitigate it in some fashion. Anthony Congelosi, who is former Secret Service agent, he now, he's now a professor at John Jay College in New York, he says, you don't surrender the discretion of what's supposed to be done to the local police. In other words, you guys have the outer perimeter, but you want to say, we need an officer on that roof. Not, that's your responsibility. Do what you see fit. You don't entrust the, the safety of the president, of the former president, or the future president in this case, to local police department. It's so bizarre. Jim Cavanaugh, also in this report, is a retired ATF agent, points out, he says, the only way to stop that is you have a lot of people, you get there first, you, you command the high ground. This is basic and the Secret Service has done it for years successfully. So I'm really surprised that they did not have that high ground from which the shooter shot covered. That point is, the Secret Service has done this successfully for years. We haven't seen one of these attempts since the last really conservative president, actually, Ronald Reagan. Weird. Weird. How, how did that break down? Somebody is responsible. This is not, you know, oh, well, mistakes happen. Somebody, this is highly unusual. We, we have video of, of a crowd of people saying, look, there's a guy on the roof. Look at him. What's that guy doing on the roof? That guy's got a rifle. What, why isn't someone doing, why isn't someone pulling Trump off stage? Doesn't get pulled off stage from, at ever, really. But, but for minutes, this is going on. What happened? What broke down? That was a great clip. Now, hold up, ring the bell, subscribe to the Michael Knowles YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.